we will talk about Uzi today. So Uzi is integrated with the rest of the Hadoop stack supporting different types of Hadoop jobs out of the box like uh, Java MapReduce, Streaming MapReduce, Pig Hive, Scope, Distributed Copy, Disk CP, as well as system specific jobs like here Java programs and shell scripts. So this is what we are going to see as an overview, what it is. Perfect friends, no worries, let me close this. So we are back to our Uzi for that's a workflow for Hadoop. <clears throat> the main advantage of the Uzi is that you can execute and monitor your workflows in uh, Hadoop. So if you want to schedule something, so remember I told you about a JPMC use case where at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, 10 million records from your Sybase gets copied into HDFS and uh, then uh, there is a MapReduce job uh, that is uh, run on that to break it up into different things and it is available for analysis by the users. If you want to automate that particular process, Okay, you would use some kind of scheduling algorithm, and that is what is uh, uh, Hadoop. Uh, so that is what is Uzi in Hadoop. So you can do periodic scheduling of workflows. You can trigger execution by data availability. Let's say you say that whenever you know a cron job, you know a polar, right? I'm sure the Java guys knows about file polar. Polar means it'll, there's a demand process, what Abhilash mentioned. There is a demand process which will, demand means a process which is continuously keeping on running. A demand process which will look at a particular folder to see if there is a new file that is coming in. You can poll that every 5 minutes, 10 minutes, or every minute. How, what is your uh, uh, level at which you want to check it? So you can do that with the help of Uzi directly. Okay, it has got a command line interface and a web console. Okay, there has been a lot of people who are using it since the time it is launched on GitHub and it is already in production in Yahoo. It is running more than 200,000 jobs every day. So let's continue. So <clears throat> this is a acyclic graph of jobs, what you can do it with a Uzi. So you can schedule something, you can write a Java code, after the Java code uh, is done, you can fork it. You can do it two things parallelly. You can do a MapReduce streaming job and a pick job. Once both the outputs are completed, you can join. And then you can take a decision as to whether you want to do more of MapReduce job or you are enough. If you are enough, you will go down to a Java main and you will do some kind of writing the data to the files and all that. That is done by the FS job, that is a file system job, and then it will come down to an end. If you feel that you want to, the data that you have got is not enough, you will continue with a MapReduce job and this will go into a loop till the time you said that the decision is enough. Okay, so it's a kind of a workflow. So for people who know BPM, business process management, this is somewhat similar to your BPM, but please note this is not BPMN, business process management notations. This is not a BPMN. There is no standard notations and it is keeping on improving. Okay, so this is about the Uzi workflow, friends. So guys, are you, are you there with me, guys? Understanding what are the purpose of this? It's a workflow. <clears throat> Suyog was saying, yes, you do have a GUI. It won't show you the workflow progress, uh, but then there is a GUI which will tell you where it is. Uh, Krishna, right now Uzi is only for your big data because the uh, activities that you can do is basically a, hey, you can use uh, Uzi if it is a plain Java-based stuff also. So right now, the beauty of Uzi is to do the MapReduce, Hive, Pig, and all of those things, which is specific to Big Data, uh, Krishna. Okay? Fantastic. So uh, Suyog had asked me, uh, is there a GUI interface on top of Uzi to see the workflow progress? Yes, you do have that, Suyog. Okay, so let me get down to the next slide. There you go. So if you look at the control flow, that is uh, what takes the control from one place to another place, there is a control flow called a start, end, and kill. Decision, fork, and join are all called as control flows. The actions that you can write is a MapReduce, a PIG, a HDFS, 
a sub workflow that means you can have a workflow uh, which can be embedded into other workflows and you can also have Java that means you can run uh, plain custom Java code also that has nothing to do with your MapReduce but still you can do that these are all the actions this is what I meant by activity so that's the reason I said this is plainly for this Hey, Ananta, uh, showing you an actual example would be a little bit difficult. You'll have to download it and you'll have to test it, friend. Okay, but then this will give you a fairly good idea about how this is uh, done. Okay, and then you can play around with this because it is quite a lengthy topic. My idea was like your uh, yesterday Hadoop 2, give you an understanding of what it is so that you can take it from there. Okay, that is what the idea is, friend. <coughs> Perfect. So that's done. So now, uh, if you look at a Uzi workflow application, okay, it is a HDFS directory containing something called as an XML file. Okay, it would also have a uh, configuration hyphen default XML files. All the apps would be there in the lib directory with the jar and with the source code files. And of course, all the scripts, whatever you want, would also be there. So if you're scheduling something, those jar files or those scripts should be there in the HDFS directory whenever you start the workflow. Siog was asking, is Uzi installed on our uh, Cloudera VM? Uh, I, I, even if it's installed, it would be a very old version of it. You might want to install the latest version. So let me go ahead and show that uh, because I haven't played with Uzi with Cloudera. Okay? Because there is a demand to understand what it is and that's the reason why we introduced these are the two new topics that we have introduced in this course, in the 10-week course. Uh, let me go down to download Apache Uzi. There we go. There is a quick start.xml. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at those docs, this is a very good place from where you can actually start. Okay, see here how to go back to the documentation index. This is where you should typically start with it. Okay, so what is overview? How do I run the examples of it? See, there it is. Okay, Uzi <coughs> examples are bundled in, the, in examples. Okay, examples must be copied to the home directory. <coughs> For Uzi share library must be, a, you, you can actually try this, 8020. Okay, fine. We, this is the default port number. You can actually try these uh, things to see how does the whole thing work. There's a Java API example. Okay, so let me uh, go back to the documentation index and uh, let me show this. I put this in the HTML for you. I mean, in the chat window for you, friends. There we go. Okay, Abhilash is asking, I think we need to install Node.js for G. Hey, you have to install ext.js, that's correct. Okay, so I've heard about ext.js, but then this is what uh, Abhilash had uh, suggested. Okay, you have to install, uh, he has written ext.js, I'm just typing that. First he has written Node.js. And then I am writing ESTJS, and then, then I'm sending the corrected thing to everybody. There we go. Okay? So this is how you can actually start with this. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and download uh, Apache Uzi. So this should be there in your apache.uzi.so and so. So there should be a releases. Yeah, 40 is the latest release, and uh, you can actually download this particular thing. So there we go. So it's a very small file, okay. And uh, even let me go ahead and not do it in my week three. I want to do it inside my week ten, so that I have that, and I'm starting the download. Okay, friends. Perfect. Okay, Abhilash was saying, uh, okay, very good. So Abhilash, looks like you had a chance to play around with this.
So this is what he had suggested. Uh, so he's saying older shows the progress, but the latest GUI supports scheduling from the GUI itself. Good Abhilash. So do you have it running on your system? So if that is the case, maybe we can have a quick demo so that others can have a look. For me, I have to set up the whole thing. And I have done this quite some time back. The objective was to give you an idea. Okay. So if you have it, uh, if you can show a demo, that will be great. That's fine. Otherwise, it's perfectly fine. <coughs> uh, the documentation should be a good place from where you can start with it. So uh, whenever we have a workflow, you will have a set of jars to be done. So all of that should be there in your HDFS directory friends. Perfect. So now when you're running a, a Hadoop workflow job, okay, uh, uh, if uh, you would be doing that with the Hadoop FS wherein you are uh, putting the uh, word count workflow into a particular uh, location on your HDFS. That's how you will deploy your application. Okay. Similarly, there are a couple of parameters what you will be having. So the application path, like what I had shown earlier, is where I have uploaded that in HDFS, the input and the output is what is specified in the properties file. So if you cat the properties file, you will see that I have specified where I can have the input data for the word count and where the output data of the word count should be uh, stored. So those are the workflow properties. And then you can run it using the way, the same way as you do Hadoop, you can run your Uzi job and uh, run that with the job dot properties.